You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. I'm back, Rudrance, for Black and White Sports, where we're going to talk about ESPN's Ryan Clark, former NFL player, now ESPN NFL analyst. He played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ryan Clark was a solid player. I don't want to act like he isn't. But what I don't know about Ryan Clark is whether or not he's a solid NFL analyst. Because the other day, after the 28-3 drubbing by the Dolphins onto the Texans from the preseason game, he went on uh, with Marcus Spears and Dan Orlovsky on ESPN and proceeded to call Tua fat. And not just fat, but fat, he said, like strippers in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, I think he even named the strip club the Onyx. He went out there and decided to call Tua fat. Now, in case you don't know the ongoing, I guess you could say, revolution of Tua Tonga-Vailoa, he had what we suspect to be three concussions last year. Okay, three concussions And he made a point in the offseason to try to bulk up. He hit the weight room, he hit heavier weights, and he has put on some poundage. Now, I don't have a problem, and I'm not one of these people that's overly offended by the fact that he decided to call some football player thick like a stripper. I could care less about that, except, did you even watch the game? Have you even paid attention to what Tua Tonga-Vailoa actually looks like? Because now i got to question your ability as an NFL analyst because Tua is not fat at all. In fact, Tua, probably in the best shape of his career, looks like he probably put on 15 pounds of muscle. By the way, he's also taking jujitsu in the offseason so he can learn how to fall better. The player is trying to save his NFL career after what was a very vivid public bad concussion on Thursday night football last year that left everybody watching Tua Tonga-Vailoa laying on the field with his hands curled up like that from a neurological response triggered by a severe concussion. Ryan Clark has come out because Tua, Tua answered him on Friday, and he slapped him back and said, essentially, hey, Ryan Clark, if you want to scrap, we can scrap. Tua was not happy. Tua is Samoan. He's proud of being Samoan. And he basically said, look, it's one thing to criticize my play on the field. It's another thing to get a little too personal. And again, I wouldn't have a problem with the fat stripper comments if you actually paid attention. Because if you paid attention, you would know Tua was not fat. Now let me set this up, and we will just we'll play the clip of what he said the other day. A five for seven, 61 yards, and an interception. So a rocky start to the game for Tua right there. Art Ooh, he got them tats. Yeah, he did. He did. Full okay. we'll sleeve. Y'all, we'll y'all sleeve. think because uh, I've been hurt, I ain't tough. I'm going to tell you, I'm tell you what he tatted. wasn't doing. He wasn't in the gym. <laughs> he I bet you that. Come on, man. He, he wasn't have, with me. He, he, he might have spent a lot of time at the tattoo parlor. He was not at the dinner table oh. eating what the nutritionist had advised. Oh, my mm. God. He looks happy. So okay. He is thick. He's thick. He's thick. Yeah, he's built like a uh, girl Thank work at Onyx in Atlanta right now on the bottom. <laughs> Come on, now. Hey. Uh, get to the show. I'm sorry. I'm allowed to ask you. Okay, so he said he wor- he's look- built like the girls working at the Onyx at the strip club. Now, I said the other day in a video I made on Black and White Sports 2, I have no idea what the hell Marcus Spears is laughing at because he's one ham sandwich and Twinkie away from being Gorlock the Destroyer. Nah, I probably wouldn't be laughing, bro. I really wouldn't. So yesterday, Tua answered Ryan Clark back. I mean, I think we all worked hard throughout the offseason. Um, and I'm not someone to talk about myself the entire time, but, I mean, it takes a lot. You think you think I wanted to to build all this muscle? Like, not nah, to some extent. Like, I, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be a little lighter. There's, I don't know, there's a mixture of things that people don't understand, that people don't know about, that are talked about, that go behind the scenes. So, you know. I'd appreciate if you kept my name out your mouth. That's what I'd say. 
<laughs> I appreciate it if you kept my name out of your mouth. Plain and simple. I mean, he, he just came right out and said it. So, now, Ryan Clark has jumped out there, and he has delivered an apology to Tua. Now, again, I wouldn't have a problem with this if Ryan Clark would have actually been paying attention to what was going on, paying attention to Miami Dolphins training camp or what Tua actually looks like by simply watching the game, but it's pretty clear, again, he's not out of shape. You just saw in that video, he's not out of shape. Yesterday, Tua Tungvaluwa had to answer questions about something I said on Monday, something that I truly just felt like was a joke to me, that I realized as the week has gone on, if this man has to answer questions about it, if so many Miami Dolphins fans are offended by it, then people ain't taking it as a joke. So let me be very clear. If I've offended you, Tua, if I've hurt you, if I've disrespected you, if anybody that supports and loves you feels some sort of way because of what I said, I truly apologize. I had two priorities when I started this job. Number one, respect the players and the executives and the coaches that make this game run. Number two, it was earn the respect of those very same people and more importantly, keep it. Anything contrary to that, then I got to check myself. Now, don't get me wrong. My ego was involved. When Tua was asked about how he felt about these comments and he said, keep my name out your mouth. Yeah, my first thought is, or what? Or he says he's scrappy. I think to myself, man, I fed my family on violence. I ain't tripping on that. But that's the pride that doesn't enable me to see what this dude's going through. The constant criticisms, the constant scrutiny, constantly being questioned, feeling the stress of always having to prove yourself just to show people you can be available. And then you work throughout the entire offseason, which I talked to his trainer and said that man was in there three times a day to build himself up to be healthy. And you got to hear a comment like this. So I get it. I get it because I do want to respect to a tongue of Lord. I get it because I want his respect too. So to the Miami Dolphins, to head coach Mike McDaniel, who I have a ton of respect for, but most of all, to Tua Tungabaloa and his family, I deeply apologize. I've reached out. I hope to talk to you soon, brother. But just know, I wasn't questioning the way you work. I wasn't questioning how much it mattered to you. It was what I can consider now a bad joke. But for me, it's been a lesson. Okay, so we'll just stop it right there. I mean, look, my, yeah, you come out and apologize, but he was like, I wasn't questioning your work ethic. Well, yeah, that's exactly what you did question. There's no doubt about that. That's exactly what you did. You said he was sitting, sitting somewhere eating all the time, clearly without a nutritionist. By the way, Tua's trainer, <laughs> Slap back at Ryan Clark, too, showing some workout pictures of Tua where it was like, look, if that's a dude that's built like a, a stripper or whatever, then the strippers must be in pretty good shape, essentially, because they didn't nobody appreciate what Ryan Clark had to say. And again, I don't I don't think it was so much the idea, you know, if, if a player's out of shape, I don't care what you say to use as an example. I don't give a damn about that. But you as an NFL analyst, for you to get it that wrong and it, may, it makes you look like you're not even watching these games and that you haven't even paid attention to what the player actually looks like and then you criticize him, I mean, then you're failing your job on the most basic elementary level. You're not paying attention in order to do your job because there's no way in hell if you've been paying attention or if you were in the locked into what's been going on with Tua this entire offseason, that you would go out there and call that dude fat because he's simply not fat, and he is in playing shape. Yeah, back when OTAs and, and camp uh, mini camp started, Tua had bulked up. He did. There were people out there making jokes about his weight. Guess what? Looks like he's lost about 20 or 25 pounds since then. So what are you basing your criticism off? Off of a guy that's ready to play football right now? 
or, or a guy in the off season that clearly had been eating a lot and trying to bulk up while hitting heavier weights. That's the part that drove me nuts. Ryan Clark offers this, you know, if I'm just being real, this limp dick apology that, that nobody cares about. Um, you know, man, that's exactly, he's a prime example of why people can't stand ESPN anymore. Because I guarantee you, his strength is talking about some kind of woke bullshit or some political ideology or some social justice nonsense as opposed to actually talking and breaking down football or players at this point. Which is sad because I remember when Ryan Clark came on to ESPN, he was pretty good for a while. But then ESPN as a whole went downhill. Looks to me like ESPN missed their mark and should have laid you off along with everybody else. Dan Orlowski, damn good at his job. He's really good at his job. Why is he good? The dude is locked in. Locked in. Man, it was such a lazy criticism. I mean, it's like, are y'all sitting back in the studio? Do you not have the game on? Because Tua played the other night. There wasn't anything about him that looked like he was actually fat. It was ridiculous. Tell me what you think, black and white sports supporters. Ryan Clark comes out, apologizes to Tua. By the way, on a side note, Tua will start taking shots, and I've already noticed a few little hit pieces coming out by the mainstream media. They're going to notice the fact that he came out and had positive things to say about Sound of Freedom, the movie that everybody's been talking about, about human trafficking. And they're going to automatically relate that to people. I mean, he's based as hell for his comments that he made about that movie. Well, the mainstream media has been an all-out war against that film. Well, guess what? When you come out and you say something like that about Sound of Freedom, well, they were already critical of Tua. It's going to get worse now. All right, plain and simple. Tell me what you think. Peace, I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.